The program you are about to see is one of many from a dynamic group of studies exploring the untapped resources of prayer. These lessons are in-depth studies of the therapeutic and supernatural powers of prayer. Together, we will study methods of prayer proven to be effective for the believer and disciple of Jesus Christ. Now, Dr. Lester Sumrall, speaking on the power that unlocks the treasures of God, prayer. Lord, listen to your children praying. Uh, the, the greatest prayer ever prayed by the greatest man that ever lived <laughs> is good prayer. You better believe it. Uh, we're going to present to you during this session of our talks together uh, what is called the Lord's Prayer. It should be called the Disciples' Prayer. And if you'd open your Bible to uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 6, we would explore this together. The actual prayer begins in verse 9, but all the way through it, uh, we're told here uh, some of the great and mighty truths of prayer. The book of Matthew is especially a very exciting book in that in chapter 1, the Master is born. In chapter 2, the Master is grown. In chapter 3, the master is baptized. In chapter 4, the master is tempted by Satan. And in chapters 5, 6, and 7, we have the whole theology of the master laid out in one dramatic discourse. It's very exciting. Then in chapter 8, he goes into action. And in that one chapter, you see almost all the different types of miracles that can be performed, performed in that one chapter. It's really exciting. And in chapter 6 here, we're taught how to pray. Let us read it together, shall we? In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, the Lord Jesus said these words, After this manner, therefore, shall ye pray, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, <coughs> our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. In that prayer, <clears throat> there are 23 elements. If you don't have time to write them down, be sure and get this uh, program a little later, where you can possess it. And in this inclusive and extensive prayer, there are 23 things that I want to talk to you about. Number one, our Father, that's the first two words, speaks of relationship with God. Uh, number two, uh, in heaven, the location of the Father. Number three, hallowed be thy name, adoration of God. Thy kingdom come. Anticipation. Whew, you better believe it. In the world that we live in today, we sure wish his kingdom would come. Consecration. Thy will be done. <laughs> That's my will. That's my desire today, to get the will of God done on the face of this earth. Universality. Not only his will be done in heaven, but the total earth. The total earth. As it is in heaven, conformity. We want to be like it is in heaven. We want to conform to heaven. I know that's the desire of your heart as it's the desire of my heart. Supplication. Give us. Give us. Uh, seeking him, believing him, trusting him. Give us this day. Definiteness. Not sometime, somehow, somewhere. This day, right now. This day. This day. There'd be millions of miracles take place if the people would confine their miracles to a definite moment. Give me this now. Oh, what a different world we'd live in. But most of us say, oh, Lord, sometime, somehow, somewhere, please, would you? And it, that never seems to come to pass. And besides definiteness, necessity, our daily bread. Penitence, forgive us. What? Obligation. Our debts. Our forgiveness as we forgive. Love and mercy, our debtors. And lead us, guidance. 
not into temptation, protection, uh, but deliver us salvation from evil, all righteousness. For thine is the kingdom, faith, that there is a beyond, there is a world uh, to live in forever. Humility and the power belongs unto him. Majesty and the glory forever. Timelessness. Amen. The affirmation to the whole prayer. One could, should quit right there. <laughs> that is what it's all about. That is what it's all about. Now, this is the model prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. So we look at it. How was this great prayer born? It didn't come by accident. This prayer was born out of the request by the disciples. Lord, teach us to pray. And uh, great things do come out of requests. It is so often referred to as our Lord's Prayer, but it is normally, it is not actually, truthfully, uh, uh, it is not the Lord's Prayer. It is a prayer that he told his disciples to pray. It is the disciples' prayer. How often we're dependent upon others like the disciples of Jesus. We must learn to pray ourselves. It's not easy to learn how to pray effectively. Anybody can mumbo-jumbo a few words, but to pray intelligently and, and uh, definitely and make things come to pass. I was in the famous orphanages in Bristol, England, and, uh, and, and uh, I was so excited about the way they were started and, and that uh, the man never asked for money, but he had the power of prayer. And every day he'd say, give me bread for this day. <laughs> and he would stay right in there until it came. And, and, and he trusted God and it came. He was feeding a thousand orphans. Uh, prayer is a tremendous force and a tremendous power. And it should be used by every one of us. Uh, Jesus had a tremendous conception of the Father because he knew him personally. So he began by saying, when you pray now, say, our Father. He, he exalted the Father and uh, himself as a son. And, and, uh, and he exalted the Father. He says, uh, our Father. And uh, John 17, 14 says, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Jesus always magnified the Father. John 17, 21, that they which be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they may be in one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. The only way the world can believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the Savior of the world, is our blending ourselves together in Christ, in God, and in prayer. And they will believe it. He reverenced that name. John 17, 26, I have declared unto, the, unto them thy name, and I will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved, wherewith thou hast loved me, I'm going to declare it. Prayer brings us into a true sonship with the Almighty God. And that's the first prayer, our Father. He's not your Father till you're born again. Jesus said of a group of people, you are of your Father the devil. They didn't belong to God one whit or tittle. Uh, they did not belong to God. Jesus saw a new kingdom, a relationship in prayer. He says, our Father which art in heaven, the kingdom of heaven is within us. Of course, Luke 17, 24 says, neither shall they say, lo, here or lo, there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And that's the kingdom that God is interested in, that you're interested in, and I'm interested in. The throne must be in our heart. Romans 10 and 8, it says, What saith thou? The word is nigh unto thee, even thy mouth in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It, it brings you into, into sonship. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. We must crown Jesus as the King of kings in all of our lives. And the Lord Jesus says then, recognize the Father God in heaven is above all, above all. John 18, 37 says, Pilate said, Who art thou a king? Jesus answered and said that I am a king. To this end was I born, for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. And he is the one that says, when you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven. And then he said, I teach you to say, Hallowed be thy name. Too many people blaspheme God. Too many people curse God. We are to hallow. We are to keep it holy. We are to keep it sacred. 
the name, hallowed be thy name, O Jehovah, and may it always be so in our hearts and lives. Jesus also taught about the kingdom. He says, now thy kingdom come. One day we'll all be in the kingdom of God. We'll all be serving God forever and ever. And how good it will be when his kingdom has come. It has completely arrived. And we're all part of that glorious kingdom. Thy kingdom come. Then he took us a step further and said, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. The will of God is done scrupulously in heaven. The will of God is done perfectly in heaven. And God wants on this earth his will to be done. Not Satan's will, not man's sinful will, but God's will to be done in our hearts and lives. In fact, every day, if we'd say, Lord, the things that I do today, are they in thy will, performing thy will? What a beautiful thing it would be. Jesus taught God's will to be done in our hearts and lives. Jesus also taught us to not only say the will of God be done, he taught us to believe God and to pray to God just for our daily bread. He said, give us this day our daily bread. Jesus taught our submission to the Lord every day and our belief in him every day that he was the one who supplies our daily bread. It is not wrong to say, Lord, today give me these material things that I need because you've already put the Father first. Our Father, which art in heaven. Identifying this, not an earthly father, but a heavenly father. Jesus saw the divine forgiveness as a principle of truth that came through prayer. Forgiveness of our debts as we forgive us as we forgive our debtors. Would you forgive us as we forgive others? Matthew 6 and 12 says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive is the acid test. All resentment, all evil speaking must go. And Luke's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 45, it says, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And then evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart bringing forth that which is evil. For the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. All resentment, evil must go. God cannot give forgiveness until you are willing to forgive. If you cannot forgive, then you cannot get forgiven. That's the plight so many people are in today. Then he makes a further statement and said, Now, lead us not into temptation. God will never do that. The devil is a tempter. And the devil's a herder. He enjoys people being hurt. God gets no blessing out of people being hurt. God loves you. And when you love someone, you care for them. And so he was saying, uh, we don't want you to be hurt in any way. Uh, we want you to know that God does care for every need that you may have. He said, lead us not into temptation. God's not going to lead you into temptation. The Lord says to, to, to shun the very appearance of evil. When, when, it, when evil has an appearance of being bad, stay away from it. Get clear away from it in Jesus' name. He says, lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Brother, there's no evil in the world that you cannot be delivered from if you're doing what God calls you to do. If you're playing with sin, you're having a problem. But if you're not, God can deliver you from every evil. There is no evil God cannot deliver you from. You must believe that. This is the model prayer. This is the prayer that the Lord Jesus Christ gave. And he says, I want you to pray this prayer. And so we want you to know that Jesus Christ is wanting you to be blessed tremendously through the effects and the power of this prayer. We want you to know that. And this model prayer that Jesus taught with 23 aspects in it. <laughs> They're very simple. It's just one big paragraph. But uh, yet many pastors... Uh, preach on this Lord's Prayer for as much as a month or two. Every Sunday, every Sunday, every Sunday. And, and the material is there, excepting for our television ministry. Uh, We're not able to do that. We've got to just lay it down to you quickly and say, grab it and hold it and keep it, and the Lord wonderfully bless you with it. And that's the desire of our hearts. And so the Lord Jesus said, now listen, I can deliver you from every evil, from any evil. It matters not what it is. You are delivered from it in Jesus' name. And how beautiful it is for you to find deliverance in that. Jesus had a vision of a world dominion in prayer. Not only did he say, lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. But he said, for thine, for thine is the kingdom. 
the power and the glory. The kingdom belongs to God. It is a glorious kingdom. All glory belongs to God. In 1 Peter 5, 11, he says, To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. And that's 1 Peter 5 and 11. The power is all that God is. In Psalm 20, 91, Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. <laughs> oh, that's great. And uh, that's what the Lord calls upon you uh, that you might do. And so here we have these tremendous assertions of the power of prayer. That you can come into a new relationship with God. That's what begins with prayer. A re new relationship. Our Father, not somebody else's, not grandma's. There, there are no stepchildren in the family of God. No stepchildren in the family of God. It, not any, even any grandchildren in the family of God. You're all children. We're all equals in the family of God. And we want you to know the relationship. And, and what father are we talking about? That father, which is our heavenly father. And when we approach him, when we pray to him, uh, the first thing we say to our father is, Hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Praise be unto thy wonderful name. Hallowed be thy name. Sometimes we forget to praise God. Maybe you have heard that we have in our country today blasphemers clubs in different cities. And they meet together to see who can out-blaspheme the other. And they give a prize to the blasphemer. They can say that dirtiest, filthiest things. And sometimes they almost go insane with their blasphemy of cursing God with a loud voice. And, and what a terrible thing it is. The very opposite of that, of course, is adoration. Praise unto God. And that, when he says, Hallowed be thy name. Anticipation. Thy kingdom come. Don't we want his kingdom to come today? Sometimes we let days pass by and we don't see Jesus come today. Jesus, come today. Please come today. Anticipation. That is so much what we want. Thy kingdom come. Consecration. Thy will be done. So often, I'll do what I please. I'll say what I please. I'll go where I want to go. And you miss God. You miss God. Maybe a whole generation is getting ready to miss God. God wants us to say, Thy will be done. Let the will of God be done in your life, my life, our, all of our lives. And then he says, Whereabouts? In heaven? Yes. On earth. The whole earth. We're sometimes interested in our own backyard. Europe. Africa. South America. Orient, North America, South America. Uh, the whole earth, this is a total situation. And then he says, give us. God wants you dependent upon him. God wants you to be dependent upon him. Give us. When? Right now. This day. This day. Some of us would like to be like the farmer who said, oh God, I've got, I've got meat in the, in the, in, in the smokehouse uh, for next winter. And I've got young pigs for the next winter. And I've got uh, older pigs for the next winter. But, oh, God, what in the world am I going to do the next winter? And three winters away, he was wondering what he was going to do. God wants us to ask for today's need, today's help, right now. And he'll give it. He'll give it. Necessity, give us our daily bread and do it today. And then he says, and forgive me, penitence. That's the, the, the cruise of this whole thing. If you're not willing to get forgiven and ask the Lord, forgive me, then he's not able to help you. Uh, he can only help us when we say, now, wait a minute, Lord. I want you to forgive us. And what? Forgive us our debts. Forgive us our sins. Forgive us our negative things. Give us things that are wrong. As we forgive. Now, that's a clause that kind of gets you in trouble. As we forgive. I believe this is very true here. Well, it was spoken by the Lord. It's got to be true. As we forgive means that you can only be forgiven the way you forgive others. If you can't forgive others, you can't get forgiveness. You're only forgiven in the same manner as you forgive others. That'll help you to start forgiving your mother-in-law, your brother-in-law, and everybody else, you see. Forgive us our, our debts. And, and as we forgive our, our debtors, which is love and mercy. And lead us. Do you ever ask God every morning to lead you during the day? During the day. Lead us. Not into temptation. We don't want to fall. We don't want to stumble. We don't want to do what's wrong. Don't let us go that way. But deliver us 
What a mighty thing it is. Deliver us. Salvation comes from the Lord. How beautiful it is to be delivered by God's mighty power. Deliver us from all evil. From all evil. Brother, you can live a good life. You better believe me. You can live a good life. God will help you to live a good life. For thine is the kingdom. Then you get into the, like the first part, our Father, which art in hell, heaven. Then you get to the last part. You're in the middle of it, but the last part. And the, the kingdom does belong to God. Thine is the kingdom. And you've got the power. You've got the glory. You've got it forever, timeless, eternal. And then he climaxes it with a beautiful little word that we all understand. It says, Amen. And uh, how beautiful it is when we follow into the prayer that the Lord Jesus Christ gave to his disciples to pass on down to you and to me forever. Pray that we must pray for his kingdom as long as we live on the face of this earth. Prayer uh, must help us to see the kingdom of this world and our Lord's domain and to know that God's kingdom comes before every kingdom on the face of this earth and that we must love God's kingdom above any other kingdom. And if we do that, we'll be the kind of people that God wants us to be. What about you today? What about you right now? How does this great, great, great prayer line up in your heart and your life? Can you conclude the entire prayer when you say unto him uh, that thine is the kingdom? Hey, are you part of that kingdom or the kingdom of this world? And you are the power. Does God have all power in your sight? And you are the glory, glorious, eternally glorious, eternally glorious forever. This is an unending, an unending situation. It is forever. And uh, as we realize this and recognize this, that we are in the right position before God uh, to pray this prayer. Many times it's prayed in church and sometimes fumbled over. <laughs> uh, the Lord wants it to be in our hearts. 23 aspects of the greatest prayer that was ever prayed by the greatest person that ever lived, the Lord Jesus Christ himself because he wanted you to know how to pray, how to reach God, how to get your needs met, how to approach the Lord, how to get all the good things that you need, and how to live forever with the Father and all the holy angels in heaven. What a beautiful example of, of, of true and heated and warm prayer unto God. So beautiful, so delectable, and I hope that you will have your part of it and be blessed in it. May I? May I bless you, please? I want to. Lord, as we deal with these lessons in depth, studies of the therapeutic powers of prayer in that they heal us, heal the wounds of life, heal the sorrows of life, heal the troubles of life, and also the supernatural element to where we move into an area that's not human, into an element where God does something, God says something, because God is something. We pray right now that you will bless, right now that you will strengthen, right now that you will help, that our neighbors be blessed of God this moment. And those that don't know prayer, bring them into prayer, into a beautiful prayer life right now. I believe you for the miracle of God. Let it be done. If you don't know the Lord as your Savior, right now is a moment for you to know him. Right now is the moment. All you have to do is to say, Lord, I'm sorry of my sins. Come in my heart, and he'll come into your heart right now. He will, he's standing by. First John 1 and 9 says, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us. That's what God wants you to do right now. Will you do it? Will you give your heart to God? Will you serve God? Will you go to heaven? It's extended to you, and you're certainly welcome. And may God bless you as you accept him right now. Many of you will say, Brother Sumrall, I, I, I love that teaching, and I'd like to know more about those 23 things in that great, in that great prayer that was prayed. Uh, we have it in several ways for you. We have it in a, in a videotape, like this here, three-quarter inch videotape. You can secure a video recorder for a few hundred dollars, and you can bring in your friends and your neighbors and, and all, and just place one of these right into your player, and it will play right through your TV set. And, and how beautiful it is. How beautiful it is. You have the same effect that you're receiving right now uh, through the teaching. And uh, that would be a beautiful thing for many are already, already doing it, and you should start as soon as you can. Uh, here we have uh, the audio tape uh, that you get two lessons for only $5. You can get today's lesson, the model prayer that Jesus taught, with another lesson on the other side. I hope that you will, by all means, uh, enjoy these teachings in this way and receive them as from the Lord. 
and he will certainly bless you. And uh, uh, you may order these for five dollars uh, from Lester Sumrall, Box 12, South Bend, Indiana, zip code 46624. There's the address right there, and the C means Lester Sumrall Evangelistic Association, and we'd like for you to do it. If, if you love uh, these uh, teachings, uh, why not uh, write to me about it? We have thousands of people that say they enjoy them. Why don't you write about it? And why don't you be uh, a, a partner with us in it? You'll see at the end of this uh, uh, lesson that it has been sponsored by someone. Why don't you sponsor a lesson like this to be created, fabricated, and, uh, and, and let people know that you're the one that sponsored Christian television to this extent. That'd be a beautiful uh, thing to do. Write to me, this Lester Sumrall, or let's see, Box 12 South Bend, and let's get together. And if it couldn't be a large gift, anything that you can give will be blessed in teaching others and teaching others our greatest need are funds to teach others the word of god when we make one master tape of this about two hundred dollars for that master tape then we send out immediately with that tape 12 of these to various parts of the country 12 of these they cost about fifty dollars each 12 of these uh, out to every part of the country to go in our network of about 250 uh, cable stations and so you can see how very expensive it is be part of it and god richly bless you now remember Whatever you might need, Christ is the answer. We want you to understand that. We want you to believe it. We want you to walk with it. And we want you to enjoy fulfillment in his name. We want you to study that prayer that Jesus taught because he, he gave it to you and he gave it to me. It's our prayer to pray. And uh, we, we shouldn't be ashamed to pray it. We should pray it and pray it in victory and pray it in joy and pray it in peace. Let it go forth from our lips and let it be understood by our hearts and let it be a great prayer unto us. So we hope that you will keep praying it and that you'll keep believing, keep walking with Jesus. We thank you for being with us in our studio today. It's very beautiful to see you. We pray that God will wonderfully and richly bless you and keep you. And until our next time, when we study together again, we hope that you'll be praying for us. And we'll be praying for you that God will richly bless you. Let us communicate one with another so we can know what God is doing in the world today and all of us be part of what God is doing. We always tell our friends and neighbors, rejoice in God, keep your head up high, believe in the Lord, and remember, Feed your faith and starve your doubts to death. Thank you.